Hi guys, welcome to Mastermind Academy. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive updates on our upcoming videos. Today I'm going to be talking about innate immunity part 3. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2, I would recommend you guys to watch it before you start this video. So what is a complement system? Complement system is a collection of hepatically synthesized plasma protein that is a part of innate immunity. There are three pathways that we should be aware of for our step examinations. Alternative pathway, classical pathway, lectin pathway. Alternative pathway is triggered when some complement protein are activated on microbial surfaces. Classical pathway is triggered by antibodies, exactly speaking IgG and IgM that bind to the antigens. CH50 test is used as a screening test. You should be aware of this for your step examinations. Lectin pathway is triggered when mannose binding lectin binds to microbial surface. This is a structure of a MAC complex or membrane attack complex. And this is basically being drilled into the cell membrane of the bacteria. And then you either osmotically kill it or you secrete some deadly enzymes through the MAC complex into the cell membrane of the bacteria and that leads to the lysis of bacteria. So what are the functions of complement system? There are three main functions of complement. One is organization and phagocytosis. Here we have a C3B which acts as an opsonin that coats microbial surface which will be recognized by a macrophage. And this process is called opsonization. Inflammation. C5A is responsible for neutrophil chemotaxis. There are many other chemoattractants for neutrophils, which I mentioned in my second video, which you should be aware of. Third is cell lysis. Here we have a membrane attack complex, i.e. MAC, which inserts into a microbial cell membrane causing either osmotic death or apoptosis. And the MAC complex basically consists of C5B to C9. Let's go back to the picture. So as you can see, it's C5B to C7, C6, C8, and C9. So guys, what is a classical pathway? Classical pathway is mediated by IgG or IgM. Immunoglobulins bind to antigens and their FC portion binds the C1 complement protein. Now to explain all this text, let's refer to a picture. Now this is a beautiful picture from first aid and uh, it's quite simple to understand. So I use this picture. Now here, as you can see the first classical pathway, which are, we are discussing, requires antigen antibody complexes. Now, active C1 is made from a C1 complement. Now you have to know that C1 complement consists of four parts. It has C1Q, C1R, C1S and C1 inhibitor. So active C1 will actually cleave C4 to C4A and C4B as shown in the picture. Also, the C1 will convert C2 to C2A and C2B. Further, C4B and C2B together will form a complex C4B2B. This is also known as C3 convertase. So our prime goal, be it any pathway, is to make a C3 convertase so that we can finally achieve C3B. So let's say this is like the first part of the pathway. So classical pathway in a nutshell, if I want to say is requires active C1 complex that breaks both C4 and C2 to C4A and B, C2 to C2A and C2B. And it leads to the formation of C3 convertase. Further, C3 convertase will break C3 complex into C3A and C3B. So this is like the first part of the pathway. Here is where the first part of the pathway will end. Right? So let's go back to the text. So I say that IgG or IgM mediated classical pathway is responsible for initiation of the complement system. Immunoglobulins bind to antigens and their FC portion binds the C1 complement protein. The C1 will consist of Q, R and S and C1 inhibitors. Active C1 cleaves C4 and C2 to C4A and C4B as well as C2A and B. 
C4B 2B complex is called C3 convertase. This is very important. C3 convertase will break C3 into C3A and C3B. Some of the C3B binds to C4B 2B complex to form C5 convertase. So let's go to the next picture. This C3B further can bind to the complex C4B 2B to form C5 convertase. This is that C5 convertase. C5 convertase activates the last step of the complement. So, as soon as we make the C5 convertase, it goes and cleaves C5 to C5A and C5B. C5B with the insertion of C6 to C9 complement pathway is what makes the MAC complex that leads to lysis and cytotoxicity. So this is the classic pathway of complement. You have to remember that this is immunoglobulin mediated. And which immunoglobulins? IgG or IgM. The next is the alternative pathway. This is triggered when C3B after C3 hydrolysis bind to surface of microbe. So let's go to the picture and understand. So alternative pathway basically is triggered when C3B formation occurs as I mentioned in the previous slide. So C3B basically is attached to the surface of microbe. Microbe bound C3B will bind another protein called factor B which is here. Factor B is broken by a plasma protease called factor D and then it leads to generation of BB fragment capital B small b. C3B will bind capital B small b complex to form C3 convertase similar to the classical path we saw in the previous slides. C3 convertase will convert again C3 to C3A and C3B and further the whole process is exactly the same. So I hope you understood the alternative pathway. So let's go back to the slide and see what I wrote. So I say that the micro bound C3B binds another protein called factor B which is broken by plasma protease called factor D to generate BB fragment, right? This fragment remains attached to C3B and forms C3 convertase and the rest of the story is the same. C3 convertase will go, break C3 to C3A and B and then C3 convertase will make a complex called C5 convertase and then C5 convertase activates the late steps of complement. Let's go to the last pathway, lectin pathway. Lectin pathway is triggered by attachment of plasma, mannose binding lectin to microbes, right? Serine proteases, which we saw, are related to C1S. If you remember that C1 had parts, right? Q, R, S, and C1 inhibitor. So serine proteases related to C1S will activate C4. And the rest of the steps are the same. So let's see the picture again. So this is the lectin pathway and we have the mannose, which is present on the microbial surfaces, right? Then C1-like complex, C1S, will actually break C4 to C4A and C4B. Then the C4B will actually join C2B to form C3 convertase. Then further, C3 convertase will break the C3 complement into C3A and C3B and then starts the last part of the pathway which is C3B making a complex C5 convertase and then the C5 convertase basically goes down to make the MAC complex. So what are the late steps of complement activation? It's initiated by activating C5 by C5 convertase and there's a subsequent proteolysis to C5 A and B. The remaining components C6, C7, C8, C9 bind to C5B. C9 protein polymerizes to form a pore in the cell membrane through which water and ions enter causing microbial death. This is the osmotic death that the books love to say. Osmotic death. C5 to C9 complex is membrane attack complex. Very high yield to know for your step exams. Now what are the complement disorders? Early complement deficiencies consists of C1 to C4 deficient proteins. Now, if you have deficiencies from C1 to C4, this will lead to increased risk of respiratory tract infections and pyogenic sinus infections. Also, 
increased risk of SLA is seen. Now, second is the terminal complement, which consists of C5 to C9 deficiencies. So if you have C5 to C9 deficiency, that will lead to recurrent Neisseria bacteremia, most often meningitis. So in a nutshell, we can say early complement deficiency is respiratory tract infection, sinus infection, terminal complement deficiencies, recurrent Neisseria bacteremia. Third is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now, of course, uh, when complements get activated in the blood circulation, we also have RBCs there, right? Red blood cells. Now, question is, does the complement attack the red blood cells? In theory, you can say, oh, yeah, it could attack. But in reality, no, it doesn't. Because we have complement inhibitors on the surface of RBCs. Now, what are those inhibitors of complement? Now, those inhibitors of complement are DAF, decay accelerating factor, that's the full form, or MERL. Now, the gene that is responsible for making these two surface anchoring proteins is known as the PEGA gene. Now, PNH is a disease where we have a defective PGA gene, which prevents the anchoring of DAF or MERL. Now, if you don't have DAF or MERL, that leads to lysis of RBCs. That's obvious because we no longer have protective cell surface anchoring proteins. So, lysis of RBCs happen and that leads to thrombosis, which is the leading cause of death in PNH. Now, Step exam question could be, what is the drug that is used to treat PNH? And you're right, the, the answer is Eculizumab. Here is the spelling, Eculizumab. This is the treatment for PNH, as it inhibits the terminal complement. The last is the C1 esterase inhibitor deficiency. Here we have hereditary angioedema due to unregulated activation of calicrine. Calicrine leads to increased bradykinin and that leads to the angioedema. Thank you for your attention guys. Bye bye.